We need to consider flow through a microfluid device when we are developing. One of the quickest ways is using computational fluid dynamics, also known as CFD. Here, CFD can save months of laboratory work and consumable costs by prototyping microfluidic designs. Well, if we make sure we understand what and how we are simulating and what the solution is telling us. Let's jump in with simulating CFD for viscous flow. Firstly, as you may have guessed, we need to understand the Navier-Stokes equations. The Navier-Stokes equations explain the motion of viscous fluid using partial differential equations for continuity and momentum equations. Here, the continuity equation conserves mass, sometimes referred to as the incompressible equation. The momentum equation is Newton's second law, which states mass times acceleration equals force. So movement, the du dt is the time dependent velocity, u is the velocity term, v is the dynamic viscosity, and p Bro. is the fluid density with p being the pressure as well as f as the force term. Combining these two equations forms a solution to solve viscous flow, which is Navier-Stokes equation. So now we know how the Navier-Stokes equations are derived, we need to understand how it is solved in CFD, or well, solutions for solving Navier-Stokes, as there's no exact solution for the Navier-Stokes equations due to the non-linear nature of the problem. So we have a pressure gradient, high to low, and a friction term due to viscosity. This relates to how our flow in CFD is laminar, so steady flow, or turbulent, unsteady flow. This involves the Reynolds number, equation two. The equation uses the flow density, the flow velocity, the characteristic linear length, and the dynamic viscosity. The Reynolds equation produces the dimensionless and unitless Reynolds number, RE. Often laminar flow is a Reynolds number less than RE equaling a thousand, where turbulent flow is greater than a thousand. Knowing the Reynolds number and whether the flow is likely to be laminar or turbulent, we can make informed decisions as to how we solve the Navier-Stokes equations and calculate the CFD flow. We typically think of two solvers when dealing with Navier-Stokes, the steady solver, where we expect flow to be laminar and a steady solution which doesn't change over time, and the unsteady solver, which is the opposite, where we would expect flow to be turbulent and be an unsteady solution over time. Looking at the steady solution, the iterative Newton method, you'll notice a few differences compared to the Navier-Stokes equation we looked at earlier. Namely, we have added additional trial and test functions. The trial and test functions act so solutions to the problem can be iterated and influence the solution based on the prior solution um, in an iterative manner um, with tolerances. The Newton method attempts to solve the velocity by trialing just that. Through the iterations, the solution should begin to converge upon the accurate velocity value. The Newton method for solving Navier-Stokes is often referred to as steady solver due to the iterations towards a final solution. Steady solvers lack of time dependent variables means they are poor at simulating turbulence, which as we stated earlier, is going to be changing and evolving over time. So in comparison, the unsteady solver looks different. The solver presented is the Turin method, but it's also known as the projection method. Essentially, as you can imagine by projection, the first equation does a tentative velocity applied to the problem, then followed by a pressure correction step, and finally a velocity correction step to correct the tentative velocity and that pressure correction. This process decouples the pressure and velocity equations to solve as linear equations. Additionally, you've probably noticed various time-dependent terms in the form of u minus u1, where the velocity minus is the prior velocity step, 
as well as the time step variable t. The Turin method solves turbulent flow over time by iterating from a starting assumption based on inlet and outlet domains. Now we have a brief understanding of the solvers we're going to use, let's look at the problem itself. Here we have a 2D flow around a cylinder. This is a great example to demonstrate turbulence we would expect when the flow rate, length and fluid density offsets the viscosity of the solution, which of course is the Reynolds equation again. We also need to consider the other parameters important for our CFD problem, such as the dynamic viscosity, the density and velocity of our fluid, as well as the time step. All of this is implemented into Phoenix, finite element computer software using a custom overhead called Bernays, a binary electro row hydrodynamic solver, which I have developed. The overhead package, Bernie's, helps assign some of the parameters and has some pre-built solvers for a variety of problems. So knowing our problem, let's calculate the Reynolds number to see if the problem is steady, laminar, or unsteady, turbulent. We substitute the values into the Reynolds equation where we calculate a Reynolds number of 613. This means the flow is likely to be laminar as Reynolds number is smaller than 1000. However, the cylinder obstructs the flow and will create turbulence. So first we'll have a look at the steady solver. This solver solves the solution fairly fast on my PC, within 20 seconds. The solution had a long tail followed from the cylinder. We know the solution is turbulent, so this long tail with a large velocity drop from 2.1 meters to 0 meters is likely to be turbulent. Also we see 1 meter flow speeds within the tail. This is unlikely to occur due to the wide velocity change and the increase in velocity within the tail. Now let's look at the unsteady solver. This solution took a little longer to solve due to the time dependent incrementation. We can clearly see the development and oscillating turbulent flow around the cylinder favouring above and below in the channel. Here we can compare the streamlines of both steady and unsteady solvers we have produced. This clearly shows how the solutions are solved and how each solver makes assumptions. So what happens if we were to shrink this model down to the microfluidic scale? Well, let's have a look at the Reynolds equation again. Here we have the solution for last time, but we are going to shrink our linear length by a thousand. So this will bring us to the micro scale. So we can take the Reynolds number from before times by 0.0001, so a thousand times smaller, and we can get a solution of Reynolds equaling 0.613. Now this is much closer to linear flow. Let's have a look at the unsteady solver this time to see whether any turbulence develops. So after a few iterations we visualise no turbulence. This could be the solution, but it could be the turbulence is so minor it is not measured in our solver and in our solution. We would likely need to improve the iterators or perhaps increase the mesh density, increasing the accuracy of the solution. Ultimately, this is what we would expect at the micro scale for microfluidic CFD models. Also, this likely means we could use a steady solver for these micro scale problems. So to conclude this video, flow dynamics such as turbulence are present differently using the unsteady and steady solvers as demonstrated with the flow around the cylinder model. It is fundamental the correct solver is used for analysing the result produced. Often calculating the Reynolds number is an important determination whether the solution requires an unsteady solver. An analysis of the system should take into account these assumptions when using either solver. Generally, the unsteady solver, Turin method, it's the best to visualize both laminar and turbulent dynamics with an unknown system accounting for the time dependent and steady states. However, if the dynamics are not time dependent, a steady state system is preferred due to converging on a solution faster and in theory, less computationally demanding. A steady solution may be optimal when investigating microfluidic models in the future where flow dynamic viscosity dominates over flow inertia forces. However, as we explore more 
about what Bernie's can do will likely lead an unsteady solver for the phase field and the electrochemistry experiments, so make sure you're subscribed for those upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.